Welcome back, anglers. This is California Fishing News for February 6th, 2020. Uh, another quick one this week, not a huge amount of change or anything happening this time of year, but there's a couple things I want on to cover, so we're, we're doing a quick episode anyways. Uh, before we get into it, some reminders. Uh, like I mentioned last week, I built a website for the podcast. It is cafishingnews.com. Uh, it's going to have the most recent episode. It's got some other stuff up there. Uh, it's also going to have some old trip reports I've written and some tutorials when I get around to doing them. Um, I'm expanding on it pretty much every week. This week I added up uh, the second trip report. There's one about uh, me bass fishing, and then the one I uh, did this week is about uh, my personal best bluefin. I caught a 140-pounder uh, in November of 2017. November 2017 saw, I think, probably the best fishing that Southern California's ever seen no exaggeration maybe in 100 years it was when out in the 60 mile bank the 150 pound tuna just went wide open and the first day we caught like 35 of these on the boat and this by the second day we had 60 and the boat was full all of these 100 pound plus bluefin uh, it was really really insane fishing and i've got a long ride up there um with some photos and it's it's a, it's a cool story so if you're interested and you're bored go to california fishing news.com ca fishing news click on fish reports and click on the one that says my biggest bluefin and uh, yeah, give it a read, it's pretty cool. Let me know what you think. Secondly, uh, the YouTube channel I'm expanding as well. All the episodes are on YouTube, as well as some other, I'm trying up some old GoPro footage I have, and then this will be uploading some of those tutorials as well. So I'm up to 95 subs, pretty cool. Hopefully I can be up to 100, so if you haven't yet, uh, search California Fishing News on YouTube, give me a subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Uh, it really helps out. All right. Let's get into the fishing. I'm just gonna go over the stuff from the past couple weeks episodes. There's any updates quick, and then we'll go into a couple new things. First, the surf fishing, not much change. Still some nice perch being caught uh, down all the way in, as far as uh, Coronado and San Diego. Um, another cool thing, there's another big fat striper caught. I think I misspoke when the guy caught him a couple weeks ago. I said they were in Orange County. They were actually north of, of PV, north of Palos Verdes. Um, this one was caught in the Manhattan Beach area. So, but this one is another nice fat striper caught on the shore on a, it looked like maybe not exactly a flash minnow, um, but that type of lure. There's a photo of it here if you're watching, you can check it out. Maybe it is, it looks like a flash minnow 110, but not the glow sardine, different color pattern. Uh, but pretty awesome bucket list for a lot of us Southern California surf anglers is to get that striper. There's also another really cool ca catch uh, from the surf this week, but that's going to be this week's Catch of the Week, so you got to wait uh, till the end of the podcast to find out about that one. As far as the inshore halibut, um, oh, lastly, there was uh, at least one more illegal halibut caught from the surf. This guy, Nick, he's got a, a website, surffishingsocalsd.com. It's got a lot of good info there. He does fish reports in a blog, um, talks about leopard shark fishing, and he's got a couple uh, halibut from the surf this winter. This one he got on a frozen anchovy on a Carolina rig. Uh, so it goes to show most people just throw lures. You can definitely get them on bait as well. Moving on to the inshore halibut, no real change there. Same as the winter yellowtail. Uh, I didn't see any reports of the home guard winter yellowtail this week. Again, doesn't mean none were caught, just means people aren't really talking about it on the internet, which is you know, never a bad thing uh, when it's kind of those small local bites like that. As far as the halibut, I definitely did see a few of those being uh, posted around the internet. So I'm sure the ones posted are only a fraction of the ones being caught. So uh, it's definitely still a good time of year to go out and bounce ball or drift some baits for halibut. Uh, moving on to the party boats. Uh, two boats, uh, a few boats went down to um, Colonnette over the weekend. The Vagabond was down there, Pacific Queen. The Vagabond, Vagabond got 35 yellowtail, and the Pacific Queen got 23 yellowtail, as well as a bunch of good rockfish and link cods. Um, I think the Salmon Hawk was down there as well, also did really good on the rockfish. They didn't catch any yellowtail, so not wide open yellowtail fishing down there or anything, but definitely still some yellowtail to be caught. Uh, there's also still a three quarter day rock fishing going on and from the new, new Seaforth out of Seaforth Landing. Those are the hundred dollar trips. They just go to the South Nine or the Coronado Canyon. Almost pretty much every day they're getting limits, full 10 rock fish a piece. Um, so not a bad way to fill a freezer. And then as far as the local trips, uh, you know, it's a lot of perch, sculpin, sand bass, some calicos, some sand dabs. Uh, and that's pretty much it this time of year. The good news is, as we approach March 1st in the Rockfish opener, a lot of the trips are, or the boats are starting to put their trips online. Um, you can see like the Thunderbird, they've got reservations open for their trip. Uh, March 1st is a Sunday, so the, these trips are gonna be overnights, a lot of them leaving Saturday night, coming back Sunday evening. Um, so if you've been waiting, 
uh, it's time you can look and try to book one of those trips on your favorite boat. Do it early because a lot of the boats will sell out because it's the opener and it's on the weekend. It's good news that just for coverage too. So there'll be more boats going to Catalina every day, more boats going to San Clemente, more boats just looking around the water. So uh, hopefully one of them runs into those tuna that have been showing up in January or March, April, the past number of years. Hopefully this year's the same. A new story this week, the Coronados got looked at uh, a couple times, saw a couple reports. Brothers Sport Fishing went, uh, this was uh, on the 31st. They said they searched the surrounding waters outside the islands and found some bird schools of yellow, or bird school yellowtail, they called them, but they could not get on them well enough to get a bite. And then the bottom fishing was pretty good. Um, nice reds, some link cods in the mix as well. Just a couple sheep sheepsheads, starry eyes. Uh, good quality rockfish down there. The other report was on bloody decks, and they also said they needed a couple schools of yellowtail, didn't get any to bite, but also experienced very good rock fishing and link cod fishing. So um, I'm not sure when the you know full day trips will start heading back to the Coronados. Maybe any time. A lot of them are doing their boat work, um, but keep an eye out for that. It's only a matter of time for those yellowtails start sitting on the island and start biting a little better. Moving on from the NorCal uh, boats. I know this is the first year I've really watched the counts, and when I talked about the Dungeness crabs, it's the same as the lobsters in Southern California, where there's the recreational period first, and then at some point the commercial season opens. And from what I was reading, people say the counts are going to drop heavily once the commercial season starts. Uh, but it seems like the boats that are getting out in uh, Northern California are still getting limits. The Pacific Pearl was out on February 1st. They got 90 Dungeness crabs for nine anglers on a half day. Uh, that's in like the Marin Coast area out of Emeryville. And another six pack went out out of Half Moon Bay, six anglers for a full day. They caught 60 Dungeness full limits and then 112 sand dabs. So there's not a ton of boats fishing for them, but most of the boats that I, all the counts I see are getting full limits still in Northern California. So if you're up that way and there's a good weather window, uh, it's a good time to go and get a bunch of Dungeness crab for the, for the table. I did see someone posted that there was like some 17 to 20 feet swells up there this week. So it could be, that's probably a big reason that not a lot of boats are getting out there, just the, the winter Pacific. Um, but you never know when you'll get your weather window. So keep that in mind. Moving on. Largemouth. Uh, as far as San Diego, I know I don't talk about location, but let's just say there's more reports of fish moving up and being shallow. Up in the Thule shallow, five feet of water, 10 feet of water and less. Um, I'm sure there's still fish out deep too. That's the cool thing. It's, you know, the fish generally winter out deep. They start moving up in waves. Some will come up early. Some won't come up for another two months maybe. Um, but it really doesn't take much of that really nice San Diego weather to heat that water temp up a, two, a couple degrees and get those fish to start, start moving up. So uh, it sounds like the fish, even across the state, are starting to move up a little bit. There was a report from New Malonis, uh, which is up in central California, uh, the Western Sierras, and they went out, they said they started the day catching a lot of fish in like 12 to 20 feet, a lot of like two to three pound spots. Um, at one point they saw a bait ball in 45 feet of water and got a two and a half pound spot out of that. And then by the end of the day, they were noticing the fish were moving up shallow. This guy was fishing a little worm, um, cast into five feet of water, got bit and landed an 11.39 pound largemouth up there huge huge beautiful fish so that reports on north cal fish reports uh you can go to the website and get the full read there but you know it's telling me if they're that fish was caught in five feet of water up in new Malonis, san diego they're definitely up shallow too it sounds like they're starting to move up shallow throughout the entire state good news i'm excited to do some bass fishing here in a couple weeks as far as trout uh it sounds like trout's good literally throughout the state in southern california you have like the put and take stock fisheries that are generally biting well. That kind of bite is generally very reliant on the stock. After the stock, the fish is excellent. And then as it gets to be a week and two weeks from the stock, it slows down just because, you know, we're taking the fish out that are in there. Um, but for Northern California, a lot of the wild fish are biting well too. Um, steelhead and trout from the Sacramento River. Um, I don't know what it is, Bomb, Bomb Lake, some brown trout being caught up there, Tahoe, Big Browns being caught, Yuba River, Donner Lake. You know, besides the high Sierras where the the river or the season closes for the trout in certain areas or it gets real cold, um, but for the rest of the state, it sounds like the trout fishing is really good. So that's another great option uh, to do that. And then the catch of the week this week, 
This uh, kind of blew my mind. I think it's a cool fish. Maybe you, you've seen it before. I had not. But an uh, angler surf fishing out of around Morro Bay, California, caught this starry flounder. If you're just listening to this, you should Google starry flounder because they are just the coolest looking fish. It's a flat fish. My initial thought when you looked at it, it's like I could tell it wasn't a halibut. It's shaped more like a diamond turbot. But if the fins on it are striped between this light brown and dark black, and it is just the coolest looking fish. Um, I did a little more research. Apparently they're not too uncommon. They kind of start from the Morro Bay's kind of toward the southern end of the range, and then they catch them all the way up into Washington. They're generally thought of as not as good to eat as halibut, but as for all the other sole and flatfish species, um, they are one of the, the second best ones to eat. So really cool, really awesome catch there. Um, that's it, guys. Didn't have a lot of time today. I got, I got things to do, but wanted to do a quick episode anyways, just because, uh, you know, it's good to stay caught up, good to keep the stoke alive. Thanks for listening. Subscribe on the podcast app. Leave me five-star review or five, four-star, three-star, whatever you think. Leave me a review. Uh, and, yeah, subscribe on YouTube. Check out the website. Check me out on Instagram, California Fishing News, on Facebook, California Fishing News. I'm even starting a TikTok for California Fishing News. That's what the kids are doing. I downloaded it. I didn't think there's much of a fishing presence there. There's actually a surprising uh, amount of fishing stuff happening on TikTok, too. So I'm out there on all the platforms. Check me out. Thank you very much. Send your reports uh, in. And besides that, I'll be back next week with more.